You made your soup too salty again. Sam got sick and died because you kept putting out stuff like this. My father-in-law twisted his face in disgust as he sipped the chicken soup I made. Here we go again, I thought. I sigh inwardly. They say my chicken soup tastes too salty, but it's always been light on salt ever since I was single. If I dilute this chicken soup, it'll almost taste like water, I thought. I talked back to them in my mind. My husband Sam passed away because of a reoccurrence of his original chronic illness, so it has nothing to do with my cooking. Then my mother-in-law finally laughed. Cindy, are you sure you don't want us to get sick like Sam? You're trying to take over this house, aren't you? Hey, Dad, isn't it dangerous to keep Cindy in this house? Well, is that right? Cindy, you wanted to take over this house, huh? This house. What is there in this house that is worth taking, I thought. I was stunned and speechless. However, my mother-in-law, perhaps thinking that I didn't get it, said something outrageous. Dad, let's get Cindy out of this house. Now's the time. Huh? My mother-in-law and father-in-law moved amazingly fast and had my stuff packed up and out of the house in no time. Wait a minute, this is a misunderstanding. I don't believe a word you say. I don't want you coming back to this house again. My father-in-law closed and locked the front door in front of me. No way. I had to stand there stunned by the suddenness of the situation. My name is Cindy and I am 38 years old. My parents died when I was very young and I was raised by my grandparents. They took good care of me but were not very well off financially. They have their old age ahead of them so I shouldn't push them too hard. I didn't want to bother them about money so I decided to get a job after high school. It was a small company but I was hired as an office worker there. The work was hard but I took it seriously and did it well. There I met Sam who was two years older than me. He was a kind and gentle person. That was my first impression of him. By the way, his first impression of me was that of a serious person with a strong sense of justice. It seems that's what it was. That's why it was a little difficult for us to get to know each other at first. But... You are a bit outgoing sometimes, and I think that's what makes you so lovable and cute. He used to say such things to me. A few years later, we got married. There was no wedding, though. This is because my husband had a dream of becoming a business owner. He had been saving money steadily since he was a bachelor. My husband's dream is also my dream. With that in mind, the two of us decided to work together to save money, so it was not hard for me to live with my husband's parents after marriage. In the beginning, after his grandfather passed away, my husband's parents lived in the house. My father-in-law was a very kind and nice man. We got along well, and my father-in-law was a gentleman like my husband. I had a feeling that my mother-in-law had a part-time job, but that was not certain, and she was home most of the time. I wonder what she's doing, I thought. My mother-in-law was tricky. After I got married, I resigned from work to focus on doing housework and taking care of the house. My mother-in-law, not knowing this, has been abusing me in the absence of my husband and father-in-law. You're so lucky to be able to enjoy my son's earnings. I don't know why Sam married such an uninteresting woman like you, but I think he's compromising too much. And... Hey... You ugly wife, don't just drink tea by yourself. You should give me some too. You're not very smart, are you? And... You're just a loafer, enjoying yourself on your husband's earnings, you know. Nitwit, get off your butt and cook some food. She'd say things like that. My mother-in-law leads a lazy life, doesn't cook or clean, and expects me to do everything for her. Which one of us is the loafer? As much as I wanted to say that back, getting into trouble with my mother-in-law here would only get my husband in trouble. I wanted to make everything seem fine to my husband, who was tired from work. Fortunately, my mother-in-law rarely says anything to me when my husband is home, so I think I'm doing okay. For the sake of my husband's dreams, I cannot have trouble with my in-laws here. I continued to support my husband by quietly doing household chores no matter what my mother-in-law said. A few years later, my husband and I worked together to finally establish a company. Although it was small in the beginning, the company grew and grew. Now that the company is back on track, I can rest easy now, I thought. I was relieved at that time. 
When my husband turned 40, a medical checkup revealed his illness. The illness that was thought to have been cured when he was a child had returned. I thought to myself, no kidding, how did this happen? The disease progressed faster than expected and he fought it, but my husband died within a few months. After that, my in-laws were terrible. With the death of my husband and the absence of a protective presence, my mother-in-law's attitude became even worse. Ranting, sarcasm, complaining, and cursing were commonplace, not to mention abusive. I was treated like a servant. You pushed Sam too hard, and now he's gone too soon. Finally, even my father-in-law, who had been kind to me, began to complain together with my mother-in-law. What should I do? Even Dad, who I rely on, has started to make me look bad. He wouldn't listen or talk to me no matter what I said, I thought. Sydney, I told you to keep the yard clean. Why don't you do it right away? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get right on it. Dad, it's true. Sam and that Cindy's outgoing personality was cute. But to me, she was just an idiot. It's really useless that she can't even do her own chores, right? I bit my lip in frustration at her mocking my husband's words. Why does she have to say so much, I thought. I was bothered by my mother-in-law, who has been doing whatever she wanted to do since my husband died. One day, after such a state of affairs continued, You made your soup too salty again. Sam got sick and died because you kept putting out stuff like this. My father-in-law twisted his face in disgust as he sipped the chicken soup I made. Here we go again, I thought. I sighed inwardly. They say my chicken soup tastes too salty, but it's always been light on salt ever since I was single. If I dilute this chicken soup, it'll almost taste like water, I thought. I have things to say to them in my mind, but I don't say it. My husband Sam passed away because of a reoccurrence of his original chronic illness, which had nothing to do with my cooking. My grandmother, who raised me in the first place, was a health-conscious person who paid a lot of attention to the seasoning of her food. That's the cooking that she taught me. I'd rather you tell me how the seasoning can make you sick. Dad used to eat it and say it was delicious, but now that Sam was gone, my mother-in-law put some weird stuff up in his head, I thought. I'm sorry. I'll go ahead and fix it. It was when I said that and stood up, my mother-in-law smiled mischievously. Cindy, are you sure you don't want us to get sick like Sam? You're trying to take over this house, aren't you? Hey, Dad, isn't it dangerous to keep Cindy in this house? What? No way. Well, is that right, Cindy? You are going to take over this house, huh? This house. What is there in this house that is worth taking, I thought. I look at my father-in-law, who denies it and doesn't listen, and my mother-in-law, who grins at me as if she knows what's up. I was stunned and speechless. However, my mother-in-law, perhaps thinking I didn't get it, said something outrageous. Dad, let's get Cindy out of this house. Now's the time. My mother-in-law and father-in-law moved amazingly fast and had my stuff packed up and out of the house in no time. Wait a minute, this is a misunderstanding. Take over something. I have no intention of doing that. I don't believe a word you say. I don't want you coming back to this house again. My father-in-law closed and locked the front door in front of me. No way. I had to stand there stunned by the suddenness of the situation. I was kicked out and not allowed in the house and stayed at my husband's office that day. They wouldn't let me in the house after the next day. I had no choice but to rent a shabby apartment. Actually, my husband's company pays well now that I had taken over it and became the president. However, I was paying the rent and other expenses for my in-laws, so a lot of money would go out. So I just continued living in a shabby apartment and saved money. My mother-in-law aside, my father-in-law was a very kind and nice man at first and treated me well, so I can't abandon him even if he's being like that, I thought. I know that I have a weakness to my personality. I'm sure if my husband were here, he would laugh at me and say I'm a softie. Two months later, I started living in a ramshackle apartment. When I opened the front door to go to work, I noticed a black garbage bag on the front door. What is this? Who would do such a thing? I found it a bit creepy and picked it up and moved it to the dump. But the next morning, another black garbage bag was left on the front of the door. 
Then I moved it to the dump, and the next day, it is again in front of my door. This continued for several days. Someone's obviously harassing me. Who on earth would do such a thing, I thought. Let's find the culprit. With this in mind, I peeked through the door scope of the front door early in the morning and waited for the culprit. Then, ah, someone's here. What, it's dad? It was my father-in-law who was placing the black garbage bag in the front door, looking around the area. My father-in-law put down the garbage bag and quickly left as if to escape. Was it really my father-in-law? Then what the hell is this? I opened the bag to see what's inside. Inside were a few clothes. I found an envelope hidden between them. And in there was a document. I looked at the back and saw my husband's name on it. I wonder why the hell this is here. When I opened it, I found my husband's handwriting, which felt nostalgic. There was an apology from my husband written on it. Dear Cindy, I knew that you were being harassed and bullied by my mother. But you tried desperately to hide it, and above all, you were afraid that it would destroy our family's relationship. This caused you to suffer. I am very sorry. My will and testament is hidden in a bookcase in my parents' house. If my mother finds out, she will try to kick you out of the house and keep my assets for herself. So I want you to collect it before my mother finds it. And with the money, I hope to be able to establish a nursing home, which has been my ultimate dream. I don't want you to have to deal with my aging father, and most of all, I want my father to live out his retirement in the optimal environment. And so on. Just like Sam. I wiped away the tears that flowed when I saw my husband's letter. Okay. I must not let Sam's thoughts go to waste, I thought. So I looked up and noticed that my father-in-law was looking at me from some distance away. Dad? Cindy? I read Sam's letter, too. I learned that my wife had been harassing you terribly, and that she had kicked you out of the house because she wanted your inheritance. I didn't know that, and I took her at her word to kick you out. I'm really sorry for all the horrible things I've said. I'm so sorry. My father-in-law apologized and fell silent. He must have sneaked the clothing out of the house in a garbage bag so that my mother-in-law would not find them. You were still subsidizing our rent after Sam was gone, weren't you? I was too late to realize such a thing. I'm grateful. Thank you, Cindy. My father-in-law, who told me so kindly, was a gentle figure when my husband was around. He had been taking it out on me because he'd been listening to my mother-in-law's words out of grief over the loss of his son, but now he finally had woken up. I smiled in relief. No, it's fine. I'm glad you understand. I understand the sadness of losing Sam, because we are family after all. Yes, family. But a certain someone doesn't think so, though, I thought. My mother-in-law doesn't seem to think so, though. It seems that the assets were more important than the sadness of losing Sam. I muttered in a low voice, and my father-in-law looked at me with a gasp. I've been harassed and verbally abused and experienced other terrible things. But I have been patient and endured it because she's Sam's family. Still, after all the terrible things she did to me when Sam died, she wanted my inheritance, so she said all sorts of things to you and had me kicked out. That's beyond selfish. I've run out of patience, you know. I can't forgive her. My patience finally reached its limit and I exploded. I don't care if my father-in-law is looking at me with a scared face. Watch, if she hits me, I'll double payback. I returned with my father-in-law to my husband's parents' home. My mother-in-law, who was at home, saw us and her eyes widened in surprise. This is Sam's letter. I hear you've been harassing Cindy a lot and doing terrible things to her. Harassment? That's a misunderstanding. I didn't do anything, I swear. Sometimes the chores weren't done well enough, and I would point that out, but I said those things for Cindy's benefit. When questioned by my father-in-law, she tries to keep quiet. You are really a jerk, aren't you? How the heck can you say that you didn't do anything, I thought. It can't be a misunderstanding. The fact that you harassed her was mentioned in this letter. Is this letter really Sam's? Cindy doesn't have a job, so maybe she had trouble making ends meet after she left home and wrote it herself. Who would lie and write such a thing? 
It's not my handwriting to begin with, I thought. When he got dismayed by my mother-in-law's words, my father-in-law let out a huge sigh. <sighs> this is Sam's handwriting, no matter how you look at it. And you don't know that Cindy has taken over Sam's company and is now the president. She even pays the rent on this house. A what? Per resident? And she pays rent? My mother-in-law froze and looked at me slowly. She seemed unable to catch up with her understanding of the sudden truth. How dare you say all those terrible things about me, like I'm a loafer or a useless person. But the one holding up this house was me. When I said so firmly, my mother-in-law turned pale. It's not good to bully me and try to get me to do everything. So I suggest that you get out of this house. Wait a minute. Dad! He didn't care about his panicking wife. No matter how many excuses my mother-in-law made, my father-in-law would not listen. And so my mother-in-law was mercilessly evicted from the house by my father-in-law. Cindy, I'm so sorry I didn't believe you and all these terrible things. My father-in-law again lowered his head and apologized again. With my mother-in-law gone, I felt lighter and somewhat refreshed. And I used my husband's inheritance to build a nursing home, which was his dream. I now work with my father-in-law to run my husband's company and nursing home. As for my mother-in-law, she has been kicked out of the house and hadn't been working. So she's panicking at having to live alone all of a sudden. She's having a hard time finding a new job because she never had lived alone and had been out of work almost all her life. She deserved it. Hopefully she'll reflect on that, I thought. By working together with my father-in-law, I have been able to balance my husband's company and the nursing home, which has gradually increased our income. I miss my husband, but I'm living happily. Thank you for watching until the end. Click like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.